Hi, this is Richard Byrne at freetechforteachers.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the features of Google Forms. Now, there's two ways to get into Google Forms. From your Google Drive account, your Google Drive dashboard, you can go to New and select Forms. Or you can just go to forms.google.com and then click the Create New Form button over here. And we'll set up our first form. Now, I am logged into a Google Apps account which means I'm able to automatically collect usernames um, and I can require a login in order to view and complete the form. In this case I'm going to turn that off because if I want people outside of my domain to view and respond to the form I have to turn that feature off. I can show a progress bar to people completing the form. I can say only allow one response per person but again Folks will have to log in with a Google account in order to do that. And I can also say shuffle question order. Uh, the one drawback to that feature is that if I wanted to automatically grade the responses later, if this was a quiz, uh, it's going to make my spreadsheet a little bit more difficult to, to read. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here and just create my first form. Let's just call it a sample form. And we'll just say it's a sample. And let's go down here. And my first question, I'm going to make your name. And instead of being multiple choice, I'll do a single line of text. And I'll make that a required question. Let's add another item here. Now I'm going to add a, another line of text question. And I'm going to say email address. And done. And now let's go ahead and add a couple more questions. So my first question here is just be multiple choice. We might say, uh, what is the tallest mountain in the world? And we'll give some answers here. Uh, we'll say Everest, K2, Rainier, uh, Washington. Or we say add other. If perhaps the students don't think any of those are correct, they can write in their own answers. Now, I can shuffle these around just by hovering over the edge of the answer choice and dragging it down. And I'll make that a required question and say done. Now, I can also add a, an image-based question, which is what I'll do here in this next item. I'm going to add an image. And on this screen, I can either pull in a picture from my Google Drive, I can do a search for it, or I can upload a picture directly. So let's go ahead and upload a picture. And I'm going to pull a picture here from my folder of personal images. And I'm going to do a little image-based question based on this picture. Okay. Now I don't need to title the image, and I don't need to put any text in the image if I don't want to. I can scroll down and I can center that image up. I can also click on the image itself and click and drag the corners of it. I'll make it a bit smaller. Now I'm going to add my question below this picture. I'm going to say add item and I'll just do a multiple choice. Let's say where was this picture taken? And I'll put in some answer choices. I might say Australia. England, United States, and again I'll put in the add other just in case students don't think any of those are correct and I'm going to shuffle these answer choices by just clicking and dragging again. And I'll make that required and say done. All right. Now I could also add a video based question the same way that I added an image based question and that would be to go in and say select the video. Now the video does have to be from YouTube and I can paste in the YouTube URL for a picture, or for the video, and then we'll add the question below it. It's the same process as adding in an image, except we'll use a video in its place. All right, now down at the bottom here, we can put in a special message to kids and say, thank you for completing the quiz. If you have finished early, Or next assignment. 
Now I can say show link to submit another response and I might use that if my students are sharing computers perhaps they're working through in, in a station environment and the next student will be able to just come along and click a link to submit another response. If you're doing this as a survey and not a quiz you might publish and show a link to the form results so that everyone can see uh, the results coming in. Maybe you're doing a survey of of the class and their favorite lunch food for the week. Uh, you can see all the results coming in. Uh, you can also say allow responders to edit responses after submitting. I'm going to turn all of those options off. And now I can say send form. And we have a lot of ways that we can get people to this form. We can add email addresses. We can send it out on social media or you can say get the short URL and give people that link. You can also embed the form directly into a web page just like you can embed a YouTube video into a web page. You might adjust the size of it, make it a little bit smaller so it doesn't take up the entire screen on your on your blog or your web page. Uh, I just made it a little bit smaller there and say done. Now a couple other things about Google Forms you might want to know as you set it up. You're not stuck with this grayscale look. You can go in and change the theme. So you maybe you want to go in and say uh, use the cars and trucks theme and that changes it a bit. You can see as you scroll down you can see we have all kinds of options. Use the library theme. If you go back up to the top You can say customize, and you could customize the form background. Maybe you do a yellow background. Ooh, that's really tough on the eyes. So you maybe do a lighter color. And you can see I put a border around it. You can put a page background. You can put your own image in there if you want to. And if you want to change the title, the title font. You can change your title font, your centering, title size, and these are all font options that you can change as you go through. If I put a header image in, you can do so as well. And if you customize this after you've already created all the questions, it doesn't affect the questions, doesn't affect the form, it just changes the look of the form. Uh, students can students can still respond to your form at any time and nothing will be changed about their responses or about your questions what we're simply doing here is changing the look and feel of the theme so that's an overview of how you can set up your google form and then next video we'll take a look at what happens when students respond to your google form and of course, for more tips and tricks like this, you can check out freetechforteachers.com.